Welcome to the Swim Swam podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, we've got a very special guest. She was the on-deck host at the 2021 U.S. Olympic Trials. You saw her face every night if you were there. She is also the GM for the ISL franchise, DC Trident, and she's also an Olympian. No big deal. <laughs> today, we're sitting down with Caitlin Sandino. Caitlin, what's up? Oh, I'm so excited to see you again. I feel like we just left each other's company, but what a great three-week snowmaha that was. And I think your days were longer than mine. So we're, we're sitting down with you today for two reasons. Um, the first of which is that we just want a behind the scenes look at, at Olympic trials and what putting on a show like that is like. It's not a swim meet, right? Olympic trials is like so much more than just people swimming in a pool back and forth, which is what most swim meets are. Um, can you take us through your duties as, as the on-deck host and just how much actually went into that aside from the hour and a half, two hours where you actually have the mic in your hand. Yeah, absolutely. You know, luckily I got to do this in 2016. So I had a much better idea of what was, you know, to be expected and just how to plan for it a little bit better Um, because of the pandemic, you know, we came in even earlier this time because of the COVID testing. So honestly, I had to be there 48 hours kind of to do nothing to make sure I clear testing and was good to go. Um, and then either the, for the first wave, I really appreciated USA swimming stance. They wanted to make it feel just as special as wave two. Um, but unfortunately I did that part by myself because I was not joined by my sidekick, Brendan Hansard. So I was actually a little nervous for wave one because a, I haven't done this in a while. V like to be out there like by yourself is a little nerve wracking. And honestly, I mean, there was good fans that showed up for wave one, but the arena was not full. So sometimes I'm on the microphone for that first hit. And I'm like, am I talking to anybody here? <laughs> you know, <laughs> or am I just talking to myself? Um, and, you know, getting ready for these shows is meeting with the producers, uh, run a show and then the sports present- presenter producer, which is just making sure all, you know, ideas creatively and strategically are matched up. And a lot of it is just making sure you hit your timelines. Um, you know, we kind of filter in between NBC. So the itinerary that we get, the run of show before we go on there is one thing, but what actually happens is another. So just making sure I'm uh, quick on my toes and listening in my ear, we can think that an interview is going to be two minutes. And then they're like 20 seconds into it. They're like, okay, we need you to wrap this up, you know? And then it's like, well, how do you cut off somebody in the middle of a comment too? So it's just being flexible, um, being able to, like I said, quick, think quickly on your toes and um, engaging with fans, which was so exciting for me. Not only did I get to go into the fans and the, the audience, the stands and to engage with these people, but that was part of my responsibility too, is to find somebody that's, going to want to be on TV. That's going to be entertaining for people that people are going to be excited and talking about. We could talk about Dressel Jr. Obviously we need to talk about that, but you know, I take that very seriously. It's like, you want to make sure you're tapping the right people to get on the big screen. Um, And then for me personally, I was, I was so honored that for wave two, every night we honored swimmers from the 2000 Olympic games. It's like the 20 year reunion or 21 year reunion. So for me, I was talking to former teammates and reminiscing going down memory lane. And that was really special and like a huge honor for me to be able to do that and to reconnect with my fellow teammates and just to talk good memories of Sydney. Uh, That does seem like a really special thing. And that's so cool that they did that. I want to start with wave one for a little bit because I, I talked to people in Omaha about this, but I, I don't think I've gotten to share my opinions on it. Yeah. I thought wave one was really impressive. Good, Um, good, good, good. The show they put on for, like you said, it seemed like they wanted to put on just as much of a show um, Mm -hmm. at wave one as wave two. And and for these younger kids or collegiate level athletes who, uh, you know, wouldn't normally get the second swims at trials, really get to step up and get their chance to perform on a bigger stage. And it was, it was so cool. And going in, I was kind of like, okay, wave one, like whatever. And then you're there and you get to experience it. And you're like, this is a very 
valuable thing for, for this demographic of athlete. Absolutely. I think you nailed it right there because I, I would say your thought was a general consensus. Everybody's like, oh, wave one, what is this going to be about? And even coaches, I heard were a little like apprehensive about it. And then later in the meet, just talking to more and more coaches, they were like, this is fantastic. The, the opportunity for their swimmers to get a second swim at this level with this type of intensity, with the hype, with the pre-show, with the national anthem, with the hype, the hype girl running around in the crowd, like welcome to the show, right? What an amazing experience. And, you know, I feel like it was, everything was just so well thought out. So think of that opening sequence, how cool with the lights and everything coming down. But at the same time, as I'm posted on my social media, I'm like, Ooh, are people in wave two going to be bummed that they already saw this? Oh no, don't worry. USA swimming already figured it out that there's going to be a different one, you know? So <laughs> nobody saw that coming into it. Like even I didn't know that until like the night before, like, Oh no, it's totally different. I'm like, of course, you know, that that's rad. So I feel like every angle was really thought about. It was very thoughtful. And I feel like, you know, this has been a very challenging year, right? We could have easily been like, Oh, well, let's just do this. No, like everything was thought of everything was, you know, so well thought out and planned that it was still just as special. You would not know that we are coming out of this pandemic and all the hoops and obstacles. I can't even imagine what it really was behind the scenes planning it just to be a small piece of it. I saw the work, but you know, I didn't, I showed up for the good part, you know, um, which I just think in general wave one was amazing. Agreed. Yeah. This, it was just, if, if you ever get a chance to go to even that meet, yeah. it, it, it was, it was such a cool meet. Um, right. and it was, again, I, so important. I think I, what I've heard is that the, that's, that's going to be the norm moving forward. I really hope so that, 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 that continues because I think again, it is valuable. So then we get to wave two. Um, was this your sixth Olympic trials? Oh my gosh. That's a great question. Okay. So 2000, 2004, 2008, I swam. So then retired. So uh -huh. three trials I swam in and then 12, I went as a spectator, okay. 16, I went as host girl. And mm -hmm. then, oh my gosh. Yeah. It's my sixth trial. That's incredible to think of. Um, yeah. So I stayed those days in between wave one and wave two, again, just the, the, the obstacles of traveling and then COVID testing and then just, I just wanted to decompress. So sat by the outdoor pool one day and all my buddies are there. You know, these are people that I don't get to spend that much time with. Um, and even people within production were like one tight knit family and one lives in London and one lives in Australia. Like I don't see those guys much, you know? So I really enjoyed my time in Omaha. I, I love the city. I love the town. I think it's, we're so welcomed there. The hotel, the staff, the, the restaurant were so, um, they're just great hosts. Um, and then I was really blessed that my middle sister came out with my nephew who is 16 now and really starting to get very dedicated to the sport, uh, just switched over the Michigan Bay Home Navidors, which is so trippy for me. Cause that's where my college coach, Mark Schubert is now. So my nephew's on this program. And honestly, I, I truly believe that him being at this meet had a life changing impact on him. I mean, he, he's going to dinner with Elizabeth Beisel, his new best friend. And he's like, Beisel, I want to be here in three years. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. Like he's like, he, he's kind of like a later bloomer into the sport anyways. But to me, that's so special to see somebody in my family get so impacted by this meet. I can't help but imagine that every young athlete that was sitting in those stands, like my nephew were like, I want to be here one day. And to me, that was incredible to share that with my nephew. Um, it's like a special bond that I'll never forget introducing him to all my friends. I mean, he got a picture with Michael Phelps, Ryan Lochte, Brendan Hansen, Elizabeth Beisel is like his new crush. Like the, the list goes on and on. He swam with Josh Davis. And then my middle sister being there because she's been to all my trials as well. She went through my whole career with me and then she just beat cancer. And then now we're back on the road traveling together again. It was just really special on a personal level. And then professionally, like I can even put into words how much I enjoyed my role at this meet. Like I am so honored and privileged to be thought of for this route, for this role. Um, you know, like I said, in 2016, I didn't really know what I signed up for. And I got there the night before and they're like, okay, this is what you're doing. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like a team USA cheerleader, you know? And then it's like, I just put this different hat on and I'm like the hype girl that's getting the fans like, let's get rowdy, you know? And the energy in the arena makes it so easy to have that energy every single night. Cause I think it's important. Like I can't let my energy die as we're on like day four or five, you know, it's like, we got to set the tone because the athletes feed off of 
the crowd, you know, they hear it, they feel it. And we were at, um, you know, the, the occupancy was less. Before pandemic, the trials were sold out six out of the eight nights, sold out. That's huge. Like that would have been electric. So then we almost have to make up for the empty seats and the cardboard cutouts out there, you know, but I feel like I, I, use, I mean, you could contest. I mean, it, it was, it was energy. Like there was electric. I feel like it never trials never ceases to amaze me. It just is always brought to this level. Agreed. I, I, I was, I had never been somewhere in a venue where there were cardboard cutouts. Um, <laughs> and so, so you walk in and like, I had seen it on TV, like in the NBA bubble. And I was kind of like, eh, like, this is, <laughs> this seems kind of lame. And then I walked into Omaha and I was like, Oh, this actually makes a difference. Like, this yeah. is actually kind of cool. I like the dog cutouts too. <laughs> <laughs> there were dogs. There were Bernie Sanders. Yeah, Bernie was my favorite for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, there was a lot of good ones. So I was like, okay, like, yeah, no, I, I, I see the appeal of this now. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, it. you mentioned, you know, you couldn't let your energy die down on day four or five. Yeah. I think for, for me personally, it was so valuable knowing having been to a trials as media before Mm -hmm. and knowing what to expect. Cause it's like, you go as a, as a swimmer or as a coach, it's like, I'm thinking of just like normal meets, like a sectional meet, right. Or like Mm -hmm. a state meet, like you go to these meets and like you get excited and rowdy and it's like a table meet. And those are like three days Yeah, (laughs) is eight days. And so like by day four or five, you're like, Oh my God, (laughs) this is a lot. And it's like, you're, yeah. And it's like, you're halfway done. And that I feel like that's a big part of trials for everyone, right? Is that it's like it's so long mm-hmm. compared to a normal swim meet. And you have to channel that energy correctly depending on what your role is, right? It's like, like for example, Jack taking your pictures. I'm like, Jack, you need to get some sleep. Like he's sending me edited pictures at like 2 a.m. I'm like, buddy, <laughs> you gotta do this again and again. And you know, the athletes and the coaches, and it's like, and for myself, I'm like, get some rest. Like you, I feel like self-care is so important, especially during something like this, because it is long. And, and I also feel like we've been kind of closed into a bubble for so long too, or just haven't left our homes or like, ah, we're free. Like, let's go crazy. Like, we'll reel it back. I'm going to have 20 days here. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um, But I, like I said, there's nothing like trials, anybody listening. If you get the experience to go as a spectator, obviously, if you get to go as an athlete, it's, um, you can't really get it until you go. I feel like, and each year it keeps getting better and better and better. And something that I think is so cool and something I take a lot of pride in, um, you know, because I do wear two hats. I'm lucky enough to still have some amazing relationship and opportunities with USA swimming and also being a GM of the international swimming leagues. Having said that I have a lot of international swim, uh, colleagues or fans or friends, so many international people reaching out to me, like USA swimming knows how to put on a swim meet. Like what a show. Like I got numerous comments from people be like, that was so fun to watch. Keep posting on your social media. Wow. 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 You know, so that I have a lot of pride in that as you know, a, a USA swimming swammer. And now we're getting this opportunity to be with them. We really do know how to put on a meet. USA swimming knows how to party. That's, <laughs> that's what I get from that. We um, love swimming. <laughs> before we go is uh back going back to olympic trials uh i don't know if you saw it on nbc but we had a fan who was a caleb dressel super fan so much so that he had the tattoos on his body uh he was he was rocking it shirtless in the stands i believe um yes. caitlin can you give me the full scoop on this oh gosh come on this is one of my favorite stories i have a lot of great stories um annie laser being one of them but yes okay so i called him dressel jr so i had spotted him in the the crowd the night previous to sitting down with him and i saw him without a shirt on i was like oh my gosh are those caleb dressel's tattoos and i got a good look and i went to talk to the family like this is awesome i'm like i need to get you guys on the big screen so then the night after they had even better seats closer to the um, bottom of the pool and i had a segment like two minute fill go find some fans i'm like i know who i'm going to go find so i sit in the middle of this adorable family 
They are like the cutest kids ever. Not only are they like adorable and so vivacious, they know swimming. Like yes. when I ask, who are your favorite swimmers? Bobby Fink, uh, Paige Madden, Melanie Margalis. Like usually it's like Michael Phelps. You know, I was like, whoa, these kids are dialed in. <laughs> so then Dressel Jr., his name's Sutton, the cutest, most adorable, most jacked, ripped kid you'll ever see, has full on Sharpies that match Dressel's tattoos to a T. So I just figured his mom did it. Like it's great artwork. Oh no. His little sister did it. Like, well, his big sister, but she's young. Like she's probably no more than 12. So this was a family affair. So we get him on the big screen. He's flexing. The crowd's going crazy. Ask him where he's from. I'm like, if there's one thing you could do with Caleb, what would it be? And he's like, swim. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. So he melts everybody's heart, but I don't know if everybody knows the part after this, I mean, there's the picture, but after this wrapped, he flexed again for the camera. Everybody went crazy. Caleb had seen this all happen on the big screen and he bless his heart, reached out to somebody at USA. So he was like, I want to go meet this kid. So Caleb wanted to come back out, but then also the award ceremonies were happening. And again, just speaks to Caleb's character. He's like, I don't want to go out there while this is happening. I don't want to take away from what's happening on the ward stand. He waited till the end when it was all wrapped. He came back out. I lifted little Dressel Jr. over the, um, the, like the little crowd section off, got on the pool deck with him. They got this great picture together. They're both flexing with their tattoos. Caleb gave them a bunch of stuff, lifted them back into the crowds. Now the kid's a superstar. I'm like, can I be your agent? Like, I want to be your agent. (laughs) It was It was so special. I think it just speaks volumes to Caleb, volumes to our swim community. It's just, it was just one of those moments I'll never forget. You hit on it. Let's talk about it. You were where you were pulling double duty at trials. Yes. You're obviously the GM of the DC Trident of ISL, um, which the draft, the ISL draft first ever of its kind just started two, three days ago. Yeah. uh, On Tuesday. I don't even know what day it is right now. Yeah. I thought I'm going to come home and have a break, but I don't. I mean, I knew (laughs) it. But yeah, I was double duty there. You know, in the mornings, I was putting my ISL hat on and getting as much ISL work as I could in the mornings, which works well because, you know, most of everybody is many time zones ahead of us. So getting up and cranking through workout, uh, the work that, you know, we need to get out. Um, I am so blessed with an amazing head coach, Cindy Gallagher, who is so dedicated and so ready and committed and so passionate and doesn't do anything like 50%. Like she does everything to the max. So she's been doing a crazy amount of research uh, leading into this draft. And then um, an amazing team manager, Brian Dieters, who knew I was going to be on the road, knew I was going to be div- uh, you know, pretty busy and divvying up my time. So what do you need? What can I help you with? And we just work really well together and just you know, getting ready for the draft, getting ready, securing my staff, which is huge. You know, This is a big commitment. It's a big ask. Like, can you be gone for at least five weeks? You know, if the 10 teams is guaranteed that, then it goes to eight and then you'd be gone for another three weeks, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited that I was able to see people in person at trials. Um, our assistant coach, Susan Teeter, she was on deck the second uh, for wave two. So being able to connect with her and chat with her. And um, I'm really, really excited that um, I was able to secure Colin Jones as an assistant coach. And that happened at trials. It was something that was in the works for quite some time. And it was really cool because um, him, Ryan Lochte and myself were chatting and we go way back the three of us and have a great friendship and share a lot of memories together. And Colin goes, he, he shared the good news right then and there. And I'm just so excited and and be able to connect with Colin in person and have a meeting about like, this is what's going to look like. This is your role. This is what I'm so excited for you to do. And, and to talk sponsorships, you know, we DC tried in the league, we need sponsors. And so seeing what makes sense, what's good synergy, what's good partnership and just getting those brainstorming going. And then, you know, as I sit in the stands with Brendan, you know, I'm very, like, I'm trying to be so unbiased, you know, because literally we are just rooting for the team. We're, we're looking forward to great swims, but then, you know, there's a side of me that has you know, that personal connection with anybody that's been on my team. So rooting for the Zach Apple, Zach Harding, um, you know, it's, it's incredible to see when Jay Litherland gets his hand on the wall for a second and, and rooting for like Bethany Gallon and Emma Barksdale. Like I have that, that personal connection there, but try to stay very, you know, even keel the whole way through. And then the other side of me, like some of these guys I used to swim with are still out there. Nathan Adrian, Ryan Lochte. I mean, Allison Schmidt started training on Club Wolverine when I was kind of on my way out and she's on her way in. So I have so many different personal ties to these athletes and then being able to be in this capacity wearing a couple different hats is 
I mean, it, it's, it's really special, but it just you know, gets tiring. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know how you do it. Honestly, I've, I've, I've been trying to lay as low as I can the last few days and I'm still like, <laughs> I'm at like 70%, I think like, I'm still not there yet. Still trying to charge up. Exactly. Um, so, so I have to ask your, you know, we're in the draft now. Um, how do you feel like it's gone for DC Trident and, and have there been surprises have, you know, has, it, I know it's only been two days, but it's like, yeah. what, what has this process been like so far to navigate as a GM? You know, the, the retaining the 15 athletes is very challenging uh, because because of my personality and my mentality, um, I have a very hard time not saving them all, you know, because I, I have really amazing human beings on my team, but then as a competitive person and as a GM and as a business person, we need to be faster. We can't be ninth again this season. And, and I don't want to be ninth again this season. Um, so I had to let, let go, meaning that they're not my protected athletes, not to say that we won't pick them up or we can't pick them up, but that's hard, you know, cause there's some really awesome people that I wish I could save all of them and bring them back. But I mean, Coleman, we have like over 900 people that want to be in ISL this year. And the minimum is 32 on a team. So that's 320 are going to make it. There's going to be a lot of disappointed people. And then obviously there's a new crop, there's a new crop, you know? So, um, I, I always knew, how should I say this? I always knew Zach Apple was really fast and season one, he did good season two. He was a different person. Like he was so dialed in. He was so confident in the water and out a little bit more of a vocal leader than he was first season. And, and I think seeing him get his hand on the wall, every time that he swam the hunter freestyle in Budapest first, that had to do something for his confidence. So I had a lot of confidence in Zappel coming into this meet, but you don't know until it's done. You know what I mean? And then somebody like Zach Harding, I mean, for us, Zach needs to taper. He needs to rest. And in Budapest, he was crushing through like hard workouts and like, he wasn't scoring us a lot of points. And then he rested for the final one. I'm like, there he is. There's the guy I recruited, you know? And then he goes to the U uh, U.S. Olympic trials and he wins, you know? So those were, I wasn't sure how Zach was going to swim, you know? And so that made me secure Zach, you know? So, um, having said that, you know, I have a lot of Olympians on my team so far already, but that's a quick turnaround. You know, they're going to be in Tokyo, come home for a few days, like pack your bags or going to Naples. Part of me thinks Six that weeks. some of the athletes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some of these athletes that didn't make the team, they might do better in Naples, you know, and, and I'm really proud and, and happy to share that um, people that follow Jacob Pebley's career, just because he wasn't at trials doesn't mean he's not swimming. I'm keeping him. That guy is on our team. We are going to rock the road with him. He is swimming amazing right now. He's going best times in the hundred. I am. He's like, maybe I'll swim that, you know? So that I think people might be surprised to see, Oh, Jacob's still swimming. Yeah. He's swimming great. He just wasn't ready for trials, but he's so ready for the ISL. Um, so yeah, it's, I'm, I'm really truly confident that we will be a stronger team this season you won't see us on the bottom of the bunch it's always great catching up i can't wait to see the dc trident in action and, and like in in just like a month two months two months i guess um i knew what the date was yeah <laughs> i'm like what day is it where are we Seriously. yeah we're, we'll, be, we'll be there in two months two months that's right so it's coming up soon. Um, thank you as always for your time. It's always great catching up um, and getting 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 a look behind the veil of Olympic trials is is always so cool. Any parting thoughts for our audience before we sign off today? Oh man, I mean, I just I'm just really grateful to still be very um, supported and embraced in the swimming community. It's crazy to think my first Olympics was 20 year 21 years ago, um, and it's on, honestly just a huge honor for me to continue to keep my relationships in the swimming world. And just I, I just feel so supported, and it really means a lot to me. You know, being the host girl is a little daunting. Like the night before I go out there, like I get like the same anxiety that I get like the night before swimming the four a.m. Because you know you're going live and you, you can't please everybody. And you don't know if people are gonna be like, oh, that girl's annoying or her voice is annoying or what is she wearing? And I just, I, I just felt um, really supported throughout my days there. And I'm just really grateful for that. So thank you for all the love and continue to support all these years. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. 
you can take Swim Swim Podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.